Hello and welcome to a new video about magnetic field. This time we start to talk about, about the driving force behind the magnetic field. Yeah, so this thing is called magnetomotive force. So it's motivating the magnets to build, it's forcing, it's forcing the magnetic field. Yeah? And we have seen already uh, that it seems to surround current somehow. Uh, and this is what we want to describe today. Uh, we, have, we have made this example where this one uh, current was pushing through a surface. So I will draw now a surface. Attention, it is very difficult to draw a surface. Uh, I'll say this is a surface. This is my surface, and now I have several wires, yeah, current path through the surface. Here, yeah, this is a current path, a current path, a current path. See here, we are leaving, we are leaving, we are leaving. So we are punching, we are punching through the surface. Here is the holes, if you want to call it like this, and here. We are behind the surface, all right? And those currents pass, they somehow uh, own their own current. Huh? So let's say here is an I1, here is an I, I2, here is an I3. I did not care now about the direction, just, just how it is. Yeah? <clears throat> and The thing I have to do, the thing I have to do is to summarize all currents, yeah, which are passing through the surface in a certain direction. Yeah. So every, th every current which is passing from back to the front of the surface, I am counting positive. Every, every, every uh, current which is passing from the front to the back, so going to the back side of the surface, I am counting negative. Yeah. And now, where is, where is front and back of a surface? Look, looks the same, right? I mean, if you take a plain sheet of paper, is this the front? Is this the front? I don't know. Huh? There's no natural front of a surface. No, we have to define it. And interesting, we are not defining back and front. Yeah? We're defining orientation of the border. Huh? So I say, this is the orientation of my border. And here, I make also this little error. Yeah, this is the orientation of my, of my surface limit, of my border of the surface, yeah, of the limits of the surface. And I'm telling you now, with this orientation, I have already defined where is front and where is back. Ha, what? How? Huh? Try to explain it. Well, let's say we have a right hand helix and we want to travel alongside this direction. Yeah? So here we will probably looking like that. We are moving like this. Yeah? Then we are hiding here and then we are appearing here. So this would be the turning direction, hopefully I can, you can see this here in my sketch. Yeah. This would be the turning direction I have to follow to go further in this defined orientation of the limit of the surface. Right hand helix, going like this. And this right hand helix right hand helix in direction of orientation of surface Limit. 
Mm -hmm. And this right hand helix is punching this area, this surface, from the back to the front. Mm -hmm. So what is what it now appears we are looking at is the front and below would be the back. Yeah? Punching. from back to the front of the surface. So indeed, if I give the surface limits an orientation, uh, then I define where is back and where is front. And now I can summarize all those currents. Uh, so let's see. So here, I1 is going from back to the front, so I1 is positive. So I say I1. I2 is going from the front to the back because it's punching in the different direction than this one, so it's minus I2. I3 is also punching in a different direction, so it's also minus I3. And the sum of all those currents which are passing through are called theta. There's a German word for it, it's called Durchflutung. Okay, it's called Durchflutung. There is no English word for it because actually the magnet, uh, magnetomotive force is different. Huh? It is, I, I call it Durchflutung. Einheit, unit, one ampere. Because if current is ampere, this Durchflutung is also one ampere. And it does not really matter. It does really, it does not matter how, how those uh, current paths look like. Let's imagine, let's imagine another. surface. Here is our surface, here is our, our orientation, here we have again our definition where is front and where is, where is back, all right, orientation by orienting the curve. And now I am doing a different current path. Huh? Now I am coming here with a current. Huh? And I'm going down here, whoop, I'm punching through, I come here out, I'm punching through again, come here out, punching through again, come here out, punching through again, come here out, punching through again, and one last time, why not? And here we will leave. So currently we have here a, a current path which is constantly wrapping around my, my axis. Uh, so I'm all again surrounding this. Surrounding, surrounding, surrounding. And every time I punch through the surface. Uh, and here now I will simply say it's an eye. Let's calculate this, this Durchflutung yeah, from this surface now. Yeah. So this theta of this surface. Let's see. Here we're punching one time against, against the direction, so we have minus i. Yeah. Here we're punching, here this is, I don't, don't, I cannot count. I cannot count because it's outside, it's outside my surface, I don't really care. Here a second time, it's the same current, but I don't know if this sneaked around the surface somewhere else. Huh? So it has a second time. It's again minus i. Huh? Second, third, minus i. Fourth, minus i. Fifth, minus i. Sixth, minus i. One, two, three, four, five, six times this current. So it's actually minus six i. Six times the same current is passing, 
is passing through the surface. So actually, we could also write this equals n n times i. Yeah. And n are the so-called windings. Here, n equals 6. There are six windings of this current path, of this wire, let's call it how it is, a wire. Uh, six windings of the wire, and this is the to flutung which appears. And now to the magnetomotive force, yeah? and I'm again using the usual the usual symbols I'm using, we are using in, in Austria, yeah, the magnetomotive force V yeah? equals this Durchflutung. Yeah? The magnetomotive force alongside the border of this surface equals the Durchflutung of this surface. Yeah? This is the magnetomotive force. Unit, it's the same, one ampere. So this actually is the magnetomotive force, eh? and this, eh? that the magnetomotive force is the sum of all. Um, currents which are passing through, this is also called uh, Maxwell's law. Okay, in German it's Durchflutungssatz, Maxwell's law. Uh, but there's something missing. Yeah? There's something missing. Uh, this is only exact in electrostatic. Yeah? Only in electrostatic situation. This means when there are no changing electric fields. Yeah? This was this is actually this is the root of the Ampere uh, law. Uh, Ampere's law saying exactly this. Uh, and then alongside comes Carl Clark's Maxwell Maxwell uh, Maxwell equations. Uh, and uh, he extended this Ampere's law to the Ampere-Maxwell law, and then we can also describe uh, electrostatic situation, uh, electrodynamic situations. Yeah? And this extension we will discuss next time. Yeah? So in next video I will again wear my little t-shirt with the Maxwell equations, because next time we are talking about the next Maxwell equation, yeah? that's Ampere-Maxwell law uh, for this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.